Awesome. Okay. So Patty, welcome. I'm uh-huh. so happy that you're here. I'm going to ask a few questions and I'm just excited to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, happy, happy tis the season. So yes. Awesome. Spooky season. Spooky Gotta love season. It. And I love that everybody's using that term this year. Spooky season. I just it's love crazy. it. It's caught on. Yeah. So Patty, would you mind sharing a brief history of just kind of what a witch is or how you would define your role as a witch in the realm today? Okay. In the realm today. Um, yes. Uh, which could be a couple of things, actually, if you want to get a, not a little technical sure. to say, I am a witch can mean your belief system, like almost your religion, like I am Wiccan or I am ceremonial I'm philemic, or I'm a traditional witch, or I'm a, now the, all the new words like green witch or kitchen witch or eclectic witch. But that, that means it's more like a lot of it, especially getting into the traditional, it, it's almost your belief system. I am pagan. I, I celebrate the Sabbaths and mood cycles, or it could be say, I'm a witch. i practice the craft i actually have both to practice the witchcraft you could be a lot of things which it basically means you are willing to 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 drive your own boat take fate into your own hands and change fate. not do things because you're supposed to do things do things you know the wind blows you this way and the wind blows you that way taking fate into your own hands and responsibility for everything into your home own hands so it's not like seven hail hail marys and you get forgiven for anything no what you do you take responsibility for along the way so it's a very consciousness belief system so um and i do believe to do it correctly you do have to have a sense of right and wrong a sense of integrity virtue ethics moral code not morality and who does what with who but um to do spell working, to practice the with, other than ritual, which gets into the religion and the belief system and the uh, you know deities part of it. To practice the craft, you can get in trouble if you um, don't know what you're doing. And but if you know it, if, at least if you know that right from wrong, you're really not going to get in trouble. Okay. I was born to be bad. No. <laughs> I was born to be bad. Well, yeah, be no, bad. it's like my best example. And this, I just thought of this this past month. It's like the difference of, of good magic and bad magic. I don't even like black and white. A good spell, like love spell. I'll, I can bring somebody a greatest love spell. Bring me the love of my life. And they could be this and that. But I would, ne- and that's good magic. I would never do a spell on a specific person because that's controlling somebody else. Mm-hmm. So that you, you just do control your world and you can tr- control your world all you want. Like my best example of that is okay, well, there, the water's on the mountain and the water runs downhill to the village and the village thrives because they have water. You're a witch and you build your house on the mountain, but it's down a ways and you don't have water. What to practice a craft would be to be a spell working, but be to build a dam and put some pipes in and take that water to your house. To me, what bad magic would be or dark magic would be to take all the water and then the villagers don't have any water and then they they all die off or they leave or they come up and kill you. There's your karmic kickback. Right. But if you build the dam and you take all the water you need, and you could take lots of water, have water features, have a pool, have a spa, so long as the villagers get everything they need and want, and that's how the universe does provide, that's good magic. Everybody lives happily ever after. I Oversimplified and the easiest way to explain it. Be a good person. <laughs> yeah, be a good person. Don't affect anybody else. Yeah. Create the life you want. And I've been able to do amazing things. I mean, odds biggest odds of things um i can't cook so i'm gonna beat a hundred thousand people to cook for gordon ramsay i'm not that athletic i'm gonna make it on wipeout i have no talent for america's got talent i'm gonna beat another half thousand people to get on america's and all with positive magic i wasn't going oh i hope that person burns their chicken or i hope that person trips over a thing or misses their note i'm like you do good and you do good and you do good and all that good piles up that's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So how would you define what which means to you? Which means to me, um, it's a conscious choice. It's a belief system. It's a philosophy. It is for me, it is a religion or belief system. I am pagan. I am witch. I'm, I'm even too eclectic to go anything beyond eclectic. I'm even beyond Wiccan or traditional or uh, ceremonial or chaos. I'm, I'm a witch and 
it to me it mean it's a lifestyle more than anything else it's, it's a choice it means i am responsible for myself i create my own life we can't control everything De there's destiny there's fate and there's free will we have but the free will that's the that's the the, the e-ticket that's the that's what where we can change everything this is so cool you're like really in my head right now so yeah, can really anybody do, i know i'm like can anyone decide to just become a witch someday sure anybody can i again you know yes i anybody can i think there's people born into it i when i was literally a little kid in my little suburban california house i would be in my little suburban backyard uh because i'm very elemental in my work i'm very earth-based I would be picking rosemary and picking mint from my my garden and stuffing it in my mom's wallet, just knowing that it would bring her more money. And and years later, when I'm studying herbs and apothecary and spell working and all that, it's like, oh yeah, I knew that. It's just as in the blood. Nobody taught me that. So some people, it, it you know, it's in them. But anybody can certainly learn it. And again, and take whatever meaning you want to it. Okay. So would you say someone who is Wiccan, that would be their religion and a witch is just a lifestyle? No, a Wiccan, I know people, to say I'm Wiccan means I, I worship the goddess. I have the eight Sabbaths, which most, most of us do. I am a Wiccan, which is a very modern religion. It's, you know, not even hundred years old, not even yeah. close to it. I am coming up from the 1940s and 50s. Um, it's modern witchcraft. They took from ceremonial. They took from all these different things and created a very modern witchcraft. So anybody who's Wiccan, that's the trend now. That's it's great. All these new young kids going, oh, I get to be witchy and wear Sephora witchy makeup. And um, but it's it's really great because it, it is a beautiful practice and it is an aware practice and it's a consciousness pra practice of being aware of life and nature and yourself and um so yeah to say but you I, the wiccans would say i am a witch mm. um I, it's a very weird crossover <laughs> yeah okay that's fair yeah so being a witch um do you have to be accepted into a coven at some point or no or, or, again, what are covens would you covens, would you covens are groups tight or loose formal or informal of like-minded people. There could be, depending on the tradition again, it's sort of like saying uh, a Presbyterian versus a Baptist versus okay. a, a Lutheran versus that we have a piano in our church and we don't in our church and we believe in this and we don't Catholic versus Lutheran versus, mm -hmm. um, but I, in the, a coven in my sense could be a perfect 13 with a high priest or priestess. Again, if you're Wiccan, there's basic guidelines. If you're ceremonial, there's basic guidelines. Um, more than not, any co coven I belong to in the last 30 plus years has been a little looser and we've practiced everything. We've been eclectic. We'll do a, a Wiccan ceremony one month and we'll do a Hindu ceremony the next month and we'll do a Jewish ceremony the next month. It's, but it's a like-minded people who have a spiritual practice together. Okay. In this day and age, more people are solitaires without a coven. And there's so many public, they're, they're consider themselves solitary practitioners and they have their own practice for their own altar. There is, again, in this more accepting modern age, there's so many public rituals, at least where I live in LA and, and everywhere. There's, you know, you find a little metaphysical, a court magical witchy store and they have for many like full moons and for Samhain, which is our new year's Halloween, right. Halloween and for Yule and for Beltane public rituals that people can go to who don't have a coven and still want to share the magic with like-minded people. Interesting. So do you think you could be any religion and also consider yourself to be a witch? Any? Um, I think so. I know a lot of people who, who, well, who still get, I'm a Christian witch mm -hmm. because they, they don't want, they, they were raised with this belief system. Right. Um, I think Christ is great. Jesus is great. I never was even raised with that, but I know people who are Christian witches and they are more like, I'm not Wiccan. I'm Christian witch. I practice the craft. I'm very shamanic in my work. I'm very, whatever they do, you could be a Jewish witch. Uh, you could be an agnostic witch. It's hard to be an atheist witch, but I'm sure somebody could justify it. <laughs> um, I'm sure somebody could justify it. And I, I think, Again, the one thing about the pagan belief system within itself, not that there aren't witch wars and all the thing that silly humans get in, no matter what you're talking about. 
um, is that it, it is a more all encompassing. It's not a belief system like so many, I'm right and you're wrong. I'm right and you're wrong. You're going to go to hell if you don't believe what I do. We're like, you're right and you're right and you're right and you're right. <laughs> it's like how to get from my house to Kate's house. There's a million different ways. You could walk, you can fly, you could swim, you can drive, you, could, you know, who's to say one's better than the other. That's true. Yeah. So what is your vision of the afterlife? Like mm, pretty great. Dead people are happy. I've been talking to them since I was four, <laughs> uh, three or four, and they're almost always fine. Mostly. I mean, yes. When I'm on ghost adventures and we were in the insane asylum or the serial killers houses or hotel Cecil or black Dahlia house, there's some stuck spirits there. There's some shades. There's some uncrossed over. There's some bad in life, bad in death. Mm -hmm. big in life big in death little in life little in death um, but as a rule they hang out because they can grandma wants to watch the grandkids come up um illness seems to go away if you had alzheimer or cancer or all that the I, the closest belief system i have is that because i study religion philosophy cosmology science and culture um, is the ancient sumerian belief system which is you go to the heaven you believe in which is kind of like, if you're going on the pearly gates, you're going to kind of create the pearly gates. If you yeah. believe in reincarnation, you're going to go there. If you believe, um, it's almost more like the matrix is how I see it. People experience. But the one thing that seems the through line is that there isn't time and space on the other side. That is one of our con constructs. Right. Time and space are human. And we talk about that all the time in philosophy, psychology, but they don't have that. So when we get to talk to them, the other side, like, doing a seance or a mediumship gallery, even paranormal investigation with paranormal investigators, they have that almost that titillation of real time, real life. Like you talk, I talk back, you talk, I talk back, whether you're working on a Ouija board or with a pendulum or dowsing rods or medium is channeling, or it's a paranormal investigator talking on their, their spirit box. It's, they have that feeling of being in of time and space. It's so weird to even like, you try to process it, but you just, you'll never be able to until you're on the other side, I guess. And, or you are someone who has the ability. So how is it that witches understand what objects like spices and candles and like rose water, how do you guys determine the making of a spell and why are items outside of incantations something that are needed for spells? No, well, nothing is needed. I, I believe we in our little human form that we are this divine and free will and whatever, don't need anything but tools are great just like a dishwasher. Yeah. Say so you, 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 you don't need a dishwasher but it's great to have especially you do a big formal dinner for 20 people. Um, I think intent, breath, bodily fluids, all that can be the most powerful spell ever. Mm -hmm. But if you have a little mugwort or a little dragon's blood to increase things, or you have that little rosemary to stick in the wallet or a candle to carve, because I work elementally as most shamanic do, air and fire and water and earth, whether that's so that, that you know, the fire that'll put the passion in and the fire and burn away negativity. Water is emotion, it's the flow. Ah, it's like the cleansing. Air is the thought pattern, the focus, the clarity, the earth, that's the grounding, the, mm. Mm, the solidity, like the strength of a tree. So it's like baking or cooking. I'm doing a love spell. Well, I need some fire in that love spell. So I'm gonna put a candle in there. Ooh, rose petals, like you said, that's the most highest vibration of all flowers. Let's do some rose petals. Ooh, maybe I need, a, and that's, it's like cooking or baking. Again, you don't need anything, but I take it all down to actually the psychological belief system of mind, body, spirit. There's 20,000 books written about mind, body, spirit, self-help, psychology, spirituality, occult, Christian, everybody. Mind, we understand mind. We'll never surpass our own belief system, period. So psychology, if you don't believe you can do something, you probably can't. If you think you can, you can. I can, you know, just we cannot surpass that mind is everything body you do have to get off the couch you have to like be active too i want to get off the couch i want to get healthy and the spirit that's the battery that makes it happen and that's the people that, that's less tangible people don't get what what is the spirit because one out of three is wishful thinking i wish i was healthy i wish i had a boyfriend or a girlfriend i wish i had a job i wish i had nothing one out of three two out of three is hit or miss three out of three is a home run i wish i had a job then you get up and you go look for a job but the spirit what is that it actually 
to, to do it through your religion or faith. Go to church, go to temple, go to mosque, prayer. Faith is that energy that can make it happen. If you're a new age person, like affirmations and vision boards, that's the power that can make it happen. You choose more of a crafty shamanic way, the candle and the mugwort and the, this and the oils and the porter and pestle can make it happen. But whichever form you use, whatever template you use, if you have the mind, body, spirit, you get it. Unless you're trying to break the law of physics, like be a foot taller or fly without an airplane, you could look at everything you've done in your life, Kate, and you that you've accomplished. You've had the belief that you could, you've taken some form of action, and you've had that spirit or faith or magic behind it. And the things you haven't quite accomplished yet, one or two things need tweaking. You don't really believe it or that you're worthy of it or that you can have it. You haven't gotten off the couch to do it or the spirit or faith the energy to make it happen and you just tweak those and you get it and in spell working or in witchcraft instead of mind body spirit of psychology we call it creation working dispatch <laughs> creation of a spell hmm. creation that's the mind oh i'm going to do a love spell so i'm going to do it on friday the day of venus i'm going to use those rose petals i'm going to put a little lavender i'm going to do that's the setting it up in your mind body is the carving of the candle the stirring of the herbs the chants and everything and the spirit is the dispatch you do in a spell work there's the dancing around the bonfire the drumming the sending it up to the heavens the chants same thing you know, you could do a little more romantic, you could do a little more scientific, you could do a little more. It's just so fascinating because I'm like, all right, so that's how a spell does its thing. And oh. you don't necessarily need an incantation to do a spell. You can just kind of like if you put your oomph into it, it should come back as long as it's like intent done is, with intention. Intent is everything. And then passion. Passion fuels us. Uh, Passion fuels anything you do. If passion fuels a spell and doubt can kill it. If you don't believe it, it ain't going to happen. So what are dangers of doing? Are there any dangers in performing spells? Um, again, so long as you are not do as you will, but harm none. I mean, that's, there's a million oversimplifications. What you put out, you get back three times. Mm -hmm. That's easy. You put out love, you get back love. You know, and it's not like who's going to go to hell. I, you know, I don't hex somebody or curse somebody because you put out a hex or a curse, you're putting out negative energy. And whether that bounces back three times, if you hex someone, I live in a world where hexes exist and then I could be hexed. So why not, why not live in a world where love exists and then the love grows? That's yeah, simple. Yeah. So you create the world you live in. Yeah. So I think so long as, and again, so you, as long as you do not, you create your life, you create what your world is. And again, the sky is the limit. Just don't affect anybody else, you know, with, without their permission. Of course, if you want a love spell on Bob and you ask Bob's permission, then you don't really need a love spell anyway. Right. You know, but, but so long as you're not harming anyone else, you really can't. So would you say the sky's the limit is what magic means to you? Yeah. 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 I think, I think so. And it certainly makes life. It keeps the mystery and mysticism mm -hmm. of everything because in our modern Western non-mystical society, we've taken the magic out of everything. It's everything's left brain right and wrong one plus one equals two when we need that logical left brain that gets us through life that turns on the computer but the right brain that creative intuitive spiritual artist that's where the magic lies and you have to learn to dance between the two and in our modern world we tried to make everything about logic and this and that even our religion started taking the mysticism out the mystic okay jesus said that or whoever said that uh, and it's like where'd the love and passion and magic go mm -hmm. even i i with getting religion philosophy magic out of the way um they took they started taking because of budget cuts they took art out of elementary schools yeah. and their math and reading schools went down scores went down period right. that's it you took away the art and the and the left brain went down you have to have both and and the craft identifies that hmm. So you're also a psychic medium. Mm -hmm. Would you mind sharing how you act like receives messages from spirit? Like, how does that come through? 
<laughs> Every which way. I think because I've been doing it so long. I mean, I have all the clear. I teach this stuff, so it's easy. Clairaudient, clairvoyant, clairsentient, claircognizant. So you see, you smell, you know, you hear, you feel. Sometimes you see with your outside eyes. Oh, grandma's standing over there. Sometimes you see with your inner eye. Oh, grandma's standing over there in your head. Same mm -hmm. thing with hearing. You might hear, there's a loud knock over here. You might hear it in your head, both equally valid. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just know grandma's standing over there. And I've, since I've been doing it so long, it just all comes together. I'm not sitting there dissecting it because that's too left brain. If I get too left brain, I'm going to shut it down. Mm -hmm. Grandma's standing over there. If I want to analyze how, I'll do that in three hours. If I want, when I'm not in that moment. It's like, it's fascinating ah. to me. I like wish so bad that it just would happen. Like one day I was just walking and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'm all knowing in that sense. But I'm like, I just, well, just you know, sometimes it does. People have big happenings, near death experiences, yeah. spiritual experiences, and it does. But it is something anybody can develop. I, I mean, different extents of it, like Everybody can learn to play piano. Everybody can take piano lessons. Everybody can learn scales and chords. Some people will be really good at it. Some people won't, but everybody can learn. Yeah, that's fair. And again, it's not hard. It's just allowing that. It's allowing to, to shift between the two that not let that left logical brain shut down that right brain. Like, wow, I, I, we, and we've lost so much of our intuition. We've, lost so much of our connection to nature and the self we we got we became little zombies by rote phoned in asleep at the wheel but you know automatic pilot i think that's part of what this whole pandemic was about a wake-up call just like hit us on the head with a two by four send us to your room until we figure out what's important and wake the fuck up yeah seriously huh. so are you ever left to interpret messages or are you pretty firm in the messages that you're receiving Oh, sometimes you have to, to, to you, you have to decipher because some spirits, again, spirit, some spirits talk in emotions, some spirits talk in pictures, animals don't spot in English, it's emotions and pictures of things, or getting into other creatures or elementals. But so you'd sometimes have to decipher, but you do want to decipher without your own belief system coloring it. Okay. In a pure way. Yeah. So when you're receiving messages, like, do you have to be with the person, like, like with them or like, can you do it from a distance like this? Or like, I literally um, have no idea how that works. Yeah, no, what you could do it from a distance. Um, energy again, no time and space, no time and space means yeah. time and space. That's so fair. like when the pandemic hit, you know, my Chris, my, my seances around the dining room table went out the window started doing them on zoom yeah. you are just as connected we might have 25 people on this zoom screen and everybody all at once feels up to here oh kate in the corner is feeling this oh so and so down there it's we connect because everything is energy everything like electricity so whether it's our energy life force sitting around a table together mm. or through a zoom screen same oh, cool so is there a way that you shut it off or are you like constantly receiving messages? No, I have a huge on off switch. Okay. That is my saving grace. I don't, I, cause most people who have the gift psychic or medium psychic means you see past, present, future, or probable any psychic is either inexperienced or not good. That says this will happen mm -hmm. because we have free will. No, unless you're some a one God, you can't say that you say, you know, I say, well, you walk out a bird might poop on your head. You can't say a bird's got to poop on your head because I'll say, don't walk out the front door. Use an umbrella. The bird won't poop on your head. Yeah. So that's the psychic means you see the medium means you talk to the other side. But most all mediums are psychic. Not all psychics are medium, but most either that they are are impasse. We feel things from other people. That's part of the gifts. I don't want to go to the grocery store and see somebody's dead grandma in the produce department. I want to go for lettuce and that's it. <laughs> So, and and people who let it take over their lives you have to dance between the two i so i i used to have a just a great big on and off 
and it makes on that much stronger when you go i am on i just open my hands take a quick breath on and boom 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 you are psychic you are and i go shutting it down i stick my thumb in my finger shutting it down for a second and and i'm just as regular as everybody um and it's it's a, and now i have a there's a dimmer switch halfway in the middle whatever you need to do yeah. But in working with people, you have to have that because people go over the deep end too much. You don't want to be one of those crazy people in the corner. So ah, fluffy, fluffy, you forget to, you know, pay your rent and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's you have to dance between the worlds, just like in thinking and work and creativity in the witchcraft. I was looking for my little broom. I don't know where it went. I have my sample broom. Eh. Where is it? Is it here? No. Again, I have a pencil sized broom. It's a pen broom. But in witchcraft, going back to witchcraft, yeah, you would lay down your besom, your witch's broom. Say this is a broom. You would you're 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 walking into your witch's broom. On this side of the broom on the floor is the mundane world, the regular world, where you pay rent and gravity counts and three-dimensional world. Over you cross over here, and this is the world of magic and possibility and fairies exist and ghosts exist and angels and whatever you want all that is here and the more definitive you walk between the two um whether you're doing beautiful ritual and divination over here or spell working or worship or whatever you choose to do and then and you go cross back cross over makes both stronger cool so what advice would you give to someone who might be interested in exploring their own abilities um learn to st start with your intuition learning see where you're drawn test everything if you don't know um uh, you know on this day and age in olden days it was hard this day and age we have internet we have everything there's amazing books you could download in one minute i have a book <laughs> my dog ate it <laughs> it's like, this, is a good this is marketing at its finest i this love it <laughs> Oh, it's old world, old world magic for the modern world. This actually is for somebody experienced or who's never done it. You don't have to call yourself a witch or a psychic or a medium. It's day to day stuff, how to find love, how to keep your house clear, how to talk to dead people, it's basic spell casting that anybody can, everybody can do. There's no eye of newt required. It's I you need a little salt in the, putting salt in the toilet gets rid of stress. What? yeah okay stuff like that my 30 second exercises so cool. my book is really good and there's a bunch of other books see and see i like when i was a seeker when i it's like i'm gonna try this and i'm gonna try that and i'm gonna try this mm, i like this part of chinese food and i like this part of italian food and i like this part of this and i'm gonna put them all in one pot and make my own thing cool um but yeah just there's so many opportunities now but my book's a really great one to start to, to figure it out if i do say so myself <laughs> absolutely so what would you say is the biggest contender for one person to be more open to abilities than another since everyone technically has it suppressed mm -hmm. why <laughs> It's learning to not overthink. It's learning to not that left brain shatter, self judgment, mm -hmm. shutting your own self down. Bah, 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 bah. Everybody, nobody breathes anymore. That's the air element. And that short, shallow, always in a hurry breathing causes chatter brains, foggy brains. And we're all foggy and chattery brain or that. Uh, there's grandma by no it can't be grandma behind you what, what should i do should i go what should i wear my green shirt today i look fat in that that chatter will shut down everything <laughs> yeah it's just learning to shush that whether you need a meditation practice or a breathing practice or take a walk in the park or a, create an altar whatever it is whatever your it, it, you know belief system having nothing to do with it we don't need to go inside and learn to quiet and then when you get to shut down the chatter you can find everything Cool. So what is your opinion on Ouija boards? I heard you say the word pendulum, I think, <laughs> in front of you um, and other methods of communicating with the other side. I have been using Ouija boards safely since I was seven years old. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it can it's it can be a portal. I don't think it should be sold in toy stores. I think it should have a completely different set of directions. It should be like, this is not a toy, but if people are afraid of Ouija boards, but they'll use a pendulum or dowsing rods or tarot cards or the lucky eight ball, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's opening up a portal for spirit. You just have to know how to, to use it. 
uh, it's like, who do you let in? Right. If you're sitting here with a Ouija board, you don't say anybody out there, then trust who they are. You don't open the front door of where you live and say, everybody come on in. Okay, give me your wisdom. What is the meaning of life? You know, homeless, drunken person with schizophrenia on the corner. <laughs> give me your wisdom, will you? And just come on in, hang out, live here now. No, you don't. You don't. <laughs> You know, you need to like, you figure out who you, okay, only good and light spirits, maybe, you know, work with your guides, put up your, your wards, your protectors, how you do it. The only time that I've ever had, you know, crazy things happen is when I let my guard down. Right. Once I, I let somebody get disrespectful, because uh, be a skeptic, great, but just in, for whatever reason, everybody needs to be respected. And this kid, maybe because he was on TV and we had these four cameras, he got disrespectful. So like things started happening and things started happening and French doors are flying open and the speakers ain't coming on. And then it got so strong. I didn't keep control of the room that not him, but the cameraman facing him burst into flames. Yeah. That was, that was interesting. It's like, ah, everybody's yes. screaming and, and cool, which medium, uh, psychic patty becomes the medic that i am I'm, I'm i'm like drop and roll and i'm calling in my protectors and guys it all turned out great a great movie came out of it but um it's it's again it's not like if you don't if you're you know driving and you don't you go way past the speed limit and you fall off a cliff it's your fault yeah so old magic for the modern world mm -hmm. i read it um, you did? I did. I did. I actually got it on the audio book and now I'm like, I actually want to buy the hard copy of it so I can have it all the time to use it as a, as a reference, but it is a little it. reference book. You like, you need to write on it. Yeah. That's, that's why, why I was like, like this besides the dog shoes. Yeah. I think the go. audio is great for people who are on the run a lot, but also just having it as a reference to both because it's, to me, it's worth it. Um, so what inspired you to write your book? I, I think, again, seeing more than working with people day to day, like my regular clients or speaking or teaching or a lot of college people, I just looked at number one, how much we give our power away. The, again, we're these amazing beings. Humans are just, so, and we give away our power to other people to fear, to really limiting belief systems, to self-belief systems. And it was really all about that. And I see energy. My little gift is seeing, I see the cords between people, cut the cords, no strings attached. I'll, I see the cords, I see. So, and, and, and I'd started saying the same thing. Like I came up with these, you have that chatter brain. So like my 30 second exercises in the book, it's like, Put your whole body into air, fire, water, earth. Oh, is that your emotions in the way? Run your hands under water. Water will release it. That's it. That's what water does. Like an aspirin does a headache. Oh, you need grounding. Touch a tree. Can't touch a tree. Grab a pencil. It's the same. It's um, breathing, breath. So it's great to meditate for an hour and it's fabulous, but I rarely have an hour. I have 30 seconds to pull it together. <laughs> so I just took all my, I don't have time for things into just like, again, and you don't have to get all, it's great to get all fancy and complicated and deep, but you don't have to. So I just wanted it for that. It don't have to, the, your doesn't have to change your belief system or your religion, or again, you don't call yourself a witch, just like, just little, literally, that's why I wrote tips, techniques, trips and techniques to balance, empower, and create a life you love. And I use the word tricks on purpose because they, they're like tricks, like things and techniques. And it's all about balance. We are so out of balance mm -hmm. in our modern world. We got away from nature, like the cycles on the moon, following moon cycles. We are 60% water. Mm -hmm. We are affected by the moon. It's not just the crazy full moon, like everybody says at the police department, the hospital, every moon cycle. So if on the two weeks of the waning moon, that's when you're adding into your life and the two weeks of the waxing, waning when the waning was getting go you let go of what's not serving you and that joy of celebration all of a sudden the good stuff in your life is getting better faster and faster the stuff you don't need falls away with the grace and ease of the moon it's just tapping into that that right. so that was the whole reason for the book and i'm like oh if i write this down i won't have to say it every day yeah. <laughs> chapter <Very> seven <laughs> yeah very true it was so weird because when i was reading it i was like um I honed in with the hand washing portion because I'm like, I, holy shit. Like I literally do that at work. Like, and this is even before I read the book, I'm like, I will go into work when I'm stressed out and I will 
put my hands under the sink and just stand there for like <laughs> five minutes with like hot water in my hands because it just feels so good to me and de-stressing. So I'm like, all right, she's on to something because I definitely See, you're do that. Like, and so many people do. Even when I give somebody readings and stuff, it's like I, so often because people are intuitive, you're really intuitive. I would just say anything I'm saying should be more confirmation than new news to you. Mm. It's in us. It's in our blood. Yeah. Like animals have instinct and intuition and, and we do too. We just forgot about it for a while. Yeah. So did you have any challenges when you were writing the book that you had to face? Um, time. Time is my challenge. Which is, <laughs> that's why we come up with 30 seconds and everything. Yeah. Um, no, I just, when I wrote it, I, I, I knew what I wanted it to be because when I started out decades ago, I would buy these big fancy books that were either boring or overwhelming and they would sit on the shelf and look like I had fancy books. I would buy a simple little paperback with big writing and easy to read and fun to read. I would devour it by something mm -hmm. by Scott Cunningham or again, early people of the day. And that's what I wanted to write. So I wrote the book and then I looked at it and I go, eh, too many words. Those are your words, Patty. Nobody wants your words. So I spent more time unwriting it than writing it, which I think is why it's like a bestseller in five countries because it, it's it's easy. We want easy and fast. You, you know, it, I want you to think like, like you had that, put that little light bulb on, not have yeah. to figure out what that means and what she's saying. I right. want you to get what I'm saying and then see how it works for you. Yeah, that's exactly how I read it too. Actually, the audiobook was so quick when it was done. I was like, that's it? <laughs> I was like, what? What? It's gone. Because yeah. normally like audiobooks are hours long and you're like, oh, and you do kind of like get worn out through it. So when it was done, I was like, oh, that is such like an easy, quick read. And I understood it. So I yeah. was like, all right, cool. But see, I, I, if if audiobooks weren't so big, I wouldn't do it in an audiobook. I could do it in an ebook because you could take chapters out, but it it is better to be able to see what because I need to know the chant for yeah. whatever sour spell to sour fruit. You must go there because that's your suit into this lemon ever bound. All cures, all ills with salt and sound. On an audiobook, how are you gonna keep recording that? How are you gonna get it? To yeah. But yeah, like, you need to have I'm... audiobooks in this day and age. So some yeah. people that's all they're gonna do is listen to it driving their car so it's better than nothing yeah I really did like it but like I said I wish I had the hard copy so that's my next step but I was like I'm happy if that I, I could through cyberspace I'd hand it to you right now a brand new copy not even my chewed up copy just like send it through our cord <laughs> do our cord. Our cord. Yeah. <laughs> so I know that you're on Amazon are you selling it anywhere else Yes, on my website now. On uh, Amazon, I sell it in print, ebook, and audiobook. On my website, um, I sell it in just print. And just print. any so other places? And any oh, other places? A couple, a couple, a couple little stores, yes, okay, cool. but not very many. I haven't. I don't even know how to get it since I self-published. Um, yeah, I, I don't even. I mean, there's a few little occult stores or metaphysical stores or new age stores. oh in texas that's at lewis it's it there's one in new york that has it and in dallas texas it has it that's but so cool it's too hard to explain yeah but it's still so cool it's like it's really i don't know writing a book and seeing it places it's awesome no it is very cool and i'm like yeah not that there's very many bookstores but it would be cool to have it at whoever whatever cool. yeah so um our friends can find you at what website pattynegri.com p-a-t-t-i-n-e-g-r-i.com from there you can get to all the social media instagram patty.negri there's a fake patty i cannot get rid of and i tried to oh, that was and that person is now contacting people and then saying do you need a reading which stuff i would never do and then asking them for money it's probably some crazy person sitting in their tidy whiteies and I am like, <laughs> I'm, so I'm like, sorry I will never solicit. You. I will never ask for money, but people are falling for it because they've got 13, 1500 followers. Okay. I just got my Instagram back for the first time in a month because not, I, that's an imitation person. That's a faker, yeah. but I was really hacked. My real site was hacked uh -huh. and it took almost a month to get it back. But Twitter, Facebook, Patty Negri, Psychic Medium. I have a YouTube page. I like to give information. There's I just, I have a web, I have my, my podcast called The Witching Hour, where I have the best experts in the world on. Today, I interviewed Christopher Penzak. He'll come out Monday. 
um, the best of the best in both the occult and pagan and witchcraft world, but also hypnotist, spiritualist, the, the, anything you can, th feng shui artist. So it's, it's just about, let's learn something today. I love it. I feel like I learned so much today. I have like 5,000 crinkles happening. Like ah, my brain yay. is growing. Yay. Would you mind? last but not least, sending us off with your favorite little incantation that just really speaks to you. Yes. Mm. I'm trying to think of what would be really good. I, I would say what, I'm gonna say, and it's real classic and it's comic, whatever you wanna create something, whatever you want to do, bring me love, bring me money, bring me whoever you're talking to, God, the universe, your higher self, your spirit guides, whatever. Um, my old school one that I say is by the power of three times three, this spell bound round shall be as I do will it, so shall it be. Because that what that means by the power of three times three, like I said earlier, what you put out comes back to you three times. So put out good things by the power of three times three. This spell bound round shall be. That means you're binding the spell. I'm binding this health to myself. Well, this, by the power of three times three, this spell bound round shall be. As I do will it, so shall it be. That's really lovely. Yeah, thanks. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I really love your energy and you are so beautiful and just you are beautiful in and out and I just am completely honored that we had the chance to have this conversation. It was really amazing. Thank you. I am too. And thank you so much, Kay. I, again, I love how you promo. I love your sense of humor. I love your <laughs> sense of self. Um, and, and you're a great host, oh, truly. You. And you have a beautiful energy and you're really gifted yourself. So thank you so much. Let it grow, babe. I'm going to let it grow. Oh, that's what my, no, my shirt doesn't say it says days. I have a shirt that says, let it grow. I thought it was. See? See, I must be psychic. I was going to say, you must know <laughs> something. No, thank you. So as, much. as are you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Old world magic for the modern world. Get your copy today. And thanks so much, Patty. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.